Okay, this is the helicopter flying handbook. I'm in chapter 14. This will be page 14 of 18. Obstacles to maintain situational awareness. I uh, already went over situational awareness in the beginning of a shorter video. This will be page 14 of 18. Obstacles to maintain the situational awareness. What distractions interfere with our focus or train of thought? There are many. A few examples pertinent to aviation and helicopters specifically follow. Fatigue frequently, frequently associated with pilot error is a threat to aviation safety because it impairs alertness and performance. Figure 14-7. The term is used to describe the range of experiences from sleepy or tired to exhausted. Two major physiological phenomena create fatigue circadian rhythm disruption and sleep loss many helicopter jobs require scheduling flexibility frequent affecting the body's circadian rhythms you may be flying a day flight monday and then a night flight tuesday your awareness and how your body and mind react to this variation in schedule is vital to safety this disruptive pattern may result in degradation of attention and concentration impaired coordination and decreased availability ability to communicate Physical fatigue results from sleep, loss, exercise, or physical work. Factors such as stress and prolonged performance of cognitive work result in mental fatigue. Consecutive days of flying the maximum allowable flight time can fatigue a pilot mentally and physically. It is important to take breaks within the workday as well as days off when possible. When you find yourself in this situation, take an objective, honest assessment of your state of mind. If necessary, use rest periods to allow rejuvenation of the mind and body Figure 14-8. All right, let's look at this. Um, countermeasures. Long naps, three to four hours, can restore alertness for 12 to four, 15 hours. Short power naps, 10 to 30 minutes, can restore alertness for three to four hours. Eat high-protein meals, drink plenty of fluids, especially water. <sighs> Rotate flight task and converse with other crew members or passengers. Keep the flight deck temperature cool. Move, stretch in the seat, and periodically get up to walk around the aircraft if possible. Allow 15 to 20 minutes after awakening to become fully alert before assuming air crew duties. Uh, figure 14A, countermeasures to fatigue according to the FAA Civil Airspace Medical Institute. So... Fatigue, fatigue also occurs under circumstances where there is anticipation of flight followed by an activity. For instance, a pilot is given a task requiring a specific takeoff time. In anticipation of the flight, the pilot's uh, adrenaline kicks in and situational awareness is elevated. After a delay, weather maintenance or other un unforeseen delay, the pilot feels a letdown and effect becoming fatigue. Then upon reassuming the flight, the pilot does not have that same level of attention. Complacency presents another obstacle to maintaining situation awareness, defined as overconfidence from repeated experience with a specific activity. Complacency has been implicated as a contributing factor in numerous activation accidents and incidents. When, acti when activities become routine, a pilot might have a tendency to relax and not put as much effort into performance. Like fatigue, complacency reduces pilot effectiveness on the flight deck. However, complacency is more difficult to recognize than fatigue since everything seems to be progressing smoothly. Warning signs of fatigue, figure 14-7, warning signs of fatigue according to the FAA, Civil Aerospeed Medical Institute, the CAMI, C-A-M-I. So, vision going in and out of focus, head bobbing involuntarily, persistent yawning, spotty short-term memory, wandering or poorly organized thought, missed or erroneous performance of routine procedures, degradation of control accuracy. All right. So, since complacency seems to creep into the routines without notice, ask what has changed. The minor changes that go unnoticed can be associated with the four fundamental risks we previously discussed, pilot, aircraft, environment, and external pressures. As a pilot, I am I still using checklists or have I become reliant on memory to complete my checks? Do I check no TAMs before every flight or only when I think it's necessary in the aircraft? Did I feel that vibration before or is it new? Was there a logbook entry for it? If so, has it been checked? Complacent acceptance of common weather patterns can have huge impacts on safety. The forecast was for clearing after the rain shower, but what was the dew point spread? The winds are greater than forecast. 
Will this cre create reduced visibility in dusty, snowy areas or exceeded wind limitations? While conducting crop spraying, a new agent is used. Does that change the weight? Does that change the flight profile? And if so, what new hazards might be encountered? When things are going smoothly, it is time to heighten your awareness and become more attentive to your flight activities. Advanced avionics have created a high degree of redundancy and dependability in modern aircraft system, which can promote complacency and, and attention. Routine flight operations may lead to a sense of complacency, which can threaten flight safety by reducing situational awareness. Loss of situational awareness can be caused by a minor distraction that diverts the pilot's attention from monitoring the instruments or scanning outside the aircraft. For example, a gauge that is not reading correctly is a minor problem, but it can cause an accident if the pilot diverts attention to a perceived problem and neglects to control the aircraft properly. So, operational pitfalls. Page 15 and 18. There are numerous classic behavior traps that can ensnare the unwary pilot. Pilots, particularly those with considerable experience, try to complete a flight as planned, please passengers and meet schedules. The basic drive to achieve can have an adverse effect on safety and can impose an unrealistic assessment of piloting skills under stressful conditions. These tendencies ultimately may bring about practices that are dangerous and sometimes illegal and may lead to mishap. Pilots develop awareness and learn to avoid many of these operational pitfalls through effective SRM training figure 14-9, mm -hmm. which we'll look at in a second. We'll go over that now. Operational pitfalls. So operational pitfalls would be peer pressure. Mindset, get their itis, duck under syndrome, scud running, continuing visual flight rolls into instrument conditions, getting behind the aircraft, loss of positional or situational awareness, operating without adequate fuel reserves, descent below the minimum in route altitude, flying outside the envelope or neglect of flight planning, pre flight inspections, and checklist. Hmm. So we'll hold off there. Yep, we'll hold off there. That's a uh, 15 of 18 that was uh, f held off at operational pitfalls, but just went through obstacles to maintaining situational awareness. All right, page 15 of 18. All right, chapter 14, 15. See ya.